Hey everybody, it's Evan here from Method, and welcome back to the Method Cast Quickie number three. This week we're going to be talking about how to do depth of field rendering inside Maxwell in Form Z. And uh, I, I've been working on this project lately where I've modeled this miniature city, and uh, it's it's a really tiny little object that was made actually for an award. It's a it's a trophy, and one thing that I've noticed is that I, I think that depth of field adds a lot to renderings and you know I don't claim to know a lot about how cameras work but Maxwell relies on some knowledge of how to actually work a SLR camera because what it's doing is it's mimicking real world optics inside of cameras when it does its renderings so you need to know a little bit about aperture and shutter speed and ISO and and those kind of things and one thing that I really love to do when I'm out shooting photographs is macro photography and so that was kind of one of the ideas behind this this project was to create something small um, because I wanted to experiment more with kind of macro photography inside the 3D modeling environment because it's really easy to achieve depth of field, um, which is a small depth of field because you have just a little bit of the image in focus and either the foreground or the background or both are out of focus while the subject of the rendering is actually in focus. And so I wanted to model a little object to be able to explore that in rendering and, and kind of get the look I wanted. So let's jump into Form Z here and you guys can see the model that I've built and it's it's a small, like I said, it's a small city and uh, it's got a bunch of little buildings on it and it kind of sits on this base. And I've already set up a couple of materials. On the, the object here itself, I'm just using a basic white material. And uh, I just use kind of material number one inside Form Z. And one thing that I wanted to do is I always go in and I turn that specular factor way down, which is the reflectivity of the object. Um, by default, most of these, if I click on another one here, you'll see that the specular factor is set up to 50 by default for any default material inside Form Z. So if you don't want a lot of reflectivity, you want to turn that down. And then the specular roughness is how, how bright those hot spots are. So if you uh, if you switch over to the ball kind of a you know primitive here, if this was set to 50 where it was originally, you can see that we have a bright hot spot here. Actually, let me do it on another color so we can see it a little bit better. Let's go to something a little darker. Okay, so if it's set to 50 and the specular roughness is set to 10, the roughness is you know if it's a low amount of roughness, it's a it's a glossier kind of an object, and if it's a higher roughness, it's a more of a of a matte kind of an object and it has a little bit of texture to the surface so you know for for this kind of a thing I'm going for a low amount on both of these but um, just be aware that you, you probably need to mess with those with any default material that you set up and start to manipulate when you're working with Form Z and Maxwell alright so I'm gonna go back down here to like two I do want a little bit of highlight to kick off of these um, but not much um, so that's one material. The other material is for the base and I just use a standard kind of Maxwell wood base for this because I wanted the object to be sitting on a base. Now the first thing you'll want to do if you don't have it in the scene already is you want to create a Maxwell light. You'll, you'll know that you can't render in Maxwell unless you have a Maxwell light or an environment in the scene. So I'm gonna scroll down here to, in my lights palette and you can see right now I don't have a physical sky or um, any of the other types of Maxwell lighting environments loaded in. So I'm going to hit plus, and light one is a fine name. I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to change the type to a physical sky, and that automatically just sets it up to be a Maxwell light. And I'm just going to run with that for now because this is a quickie. You know, I just want to get this done, show you kind of the basics. So I'm going to turn off my original sunlight to get kind of a realistic um, preview here of what the lighting is going to look like. And the other thing you might want to do is set up the location of that light. So how I usually set up the locations of the lights is I hit the plus, the little uh, visibility icon here. And you can see now we see this vector in our image, which is the direction of that physical sky light. And then I click on this little button right here, which allows me to go to a quad view of my, envi of my whole scene. And I can zoom out. And I can actually see now here's my object sitting on the base, and here's the location of that light. So with the Move tool, I can now click on that light source and I can drag it around and get it exactly how I want it. So depending on the type of uh, light that you want to get on the scene, you can go ahead and set that 
up. Oh, and one of the things that I do this mistake all the time is for some reason, you know, I forget to turn back off my copy attribute. Okay, so if I undo that real quick, I want to make sure I set the move options to self before I start moving the light around. <clears throat> I always forget to do that, so no big deal, but um, just be aware that, that that happens. The other thing that you might want to do is go into one of these front orthographic views and lower the altitude of the light to get something a little more dramatic. Okay. Once you've done that, click back into the perspective view and you can turn that quad view back off. Whichever view you're last in is the one it's going to go to when you come in and out of that quad view. Okay, so a little tip there. All right, so let's say that that lighting is great. Um, and now let's set up our, our angle. And I'm going to go to a, a different kind of a view here for to illustrate this. And the way to set up these views when you're when you have really small objects like this is you'll notice like when I click on my scroll wheel when I when I rotate a little bit I I jump in quite a bit and that's just the way that Form Z and Bonsai work when it comes to editing your cone of vision um, it's not something I particularly like but it is how it is so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into View Edit Cone of Vision and this is how you can make minor adjustments. Okay, so you see now we have this quad view again, but instead of being the modeling environment, this is just for editing cameras. All right, so you can see we can actually, we have the lights palette, we have the views palette. I'm going to turn my light back off because I don't need to see it anymore. I've got the position set. I'm going to zoom in, and you can see here in my top view, I have the little arrowhead right here, which is our center of interest and this little dot up here which is our point of view so that's where we are that's where our eye is and this little arrow down here is what we're looking at and this is the focal point for depth of any kind of depth of field rendering inside of Maxwell so I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna drag it in and you'll notice my view it didn't change at all but I'm changing my focal plane of what is actually being focused on now if I zoom back out you'll see I also have this cone and those are are different um, clipping planes for the camera and these don't really matter when it comes to setting up these different um, depth of field views but I do like to kind of keep a compact camera rig here um, you can also click on this dot and you can rotate the camera around so that's your yaw for the camera so if I click on the dot up here you can see now I can adjust and get this exactly where I want it because I can adjust this in very small amounts where my point of view is instead of using the scroll wheel in the modeling environment so I recommend when you're final tweaking these views you want to probably do it in the Kona Vision editor here so in all, all of these here um, you can make sure that that focal point is exactly where you want it and wherever this arrow is is at in relation to your geometry that is going to be what the, the um, the camera's focusing on. So if you want to focus on this front building right here, you want to make sure that your arrow is pretty well lined up with that building there in that view and in this view here. So you'll see I want to pull that so that it's right at the object I want to focus on. And if you really want to focus on it, you'll actually want to move your camera rig to be looking right at it. Okay. So if that's important to you, make sure you do that. Now if I wanted to focus back further into the scene, I would click on that and I would drag it back to the point I wanted to focus on. So if you want some objects in the foreground to be out of focus and some objects in the background to be out of focus, you're going to want that kind of in the middle of the object. If you want the stuff in the front to be in focus and everything in the background, you're going to want to make sure you're focusing on the object you want to focus on. Once you've got that view set up, you can go ahead and close the cone of vision. I'm going to hit save real quick just in case something goes wrong here. And what I'm going to do now is go into my display options for Maxwell and just run through some of these things here real quick. One thing that I always do is set a different time limit and sampling level than what it comes with by default. I think the time limit by default is 30 and the sampling level is 25. Um, sampling level, when you don't have any like highly reflective or refractive transparent objects, you can set that lower. 12 is probably a maximum that you'd want to go with. You could go even lower on, on a scene like this. Um, I'd probably go up to 16 or 18 if I had a lot of glass kind of objects in there. My time limit, this is just, you know, how far do you want Maxwell to refine the image? So if I, 100 is fine for now, but sometimes you might go higher. 
All right, I want it to launch Maxwell. I don't want it to launch anything else. I don't want it to launch Studio. I want it to render right inside Maxwell. So the image, one thing that I do on this, because I don't want the sky background that the Maxwell um, physical sky comes in with automatically, I make sure I turn on alpha. That's going to give me a black background. And that also gives me the ability to swap out the background later inside Photoshop or whatever image editor you're using. Um, my image format, I usually go with PNG because it's a small file, but it's fully um, uncompressed. The camera, this is where our um, settings are most important to achieve depth of field. All right, and so sensitivity, this is your ISO. You know, 100 is great for daylight. Um, so these are all things that you should spend a little bit of time getting into. Um, there's a great website for kind of learning the basics of this, and it's called Simulens. I'll provide a link to it in the blog post. And uh, I've talked about it before in my other Maxwell videos. But the thing that you can do if you're not getting enough depth of field is that you can lock the, the EV and you might turn your f-stop down, which is effectively opening up the aperture of the camera. And so you could go down with a lower number like 4 here. And that's going to automatically raise the shutter speed. Um, but that may give you more depth of field. And this is something you're going to have to play with. Okay, And, and so start to futz around with these different um, settings and, and you'll kind of figure out what it means. I'm just going to go back to 8 real quick. And I'm going to just do a, a basic rendering at this, and I'll show you how the depth of field looks, and then we'll go back and do another one. So we'll kind of do a, a comparison. Um, the other thing is, I, you know, typically if I'm just doing some one-off renders, I'll switch to image only for the output, output, output file. And what that's going to allow me to do is just save some disk space with all the files that Maxwell that that it writes. All right, so let's hit render and let's see what happens here. All right, so here is that rendering going in Maxwell and you can see that this front building here is going to be sharp and in focus and the stuff in the background is kind of blurry all right and uh, so if you want to start controlling this and playing around with the amount of blur that's when you want to start messing with the uh, aperture and shutter speed and ISO settings and so you know you can see that the exposure is pretty good in here and so what I'm gonna do is set the go back into form Z and I'm gonna set the exposure lock turn that on here for Maxwell and so that's in the camera settings I'm gonna turn the exposure lock on and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a lower number in the f-stop which in effect gives us a higher um, amount of opening for the aperture blades in the camera which gives us more light and uh, that's going to effectively give us hopefully more blur. So I'm going to hit render again. And it's going to open up a new instance of Maxwell and we're going to render that one and look at the difference. Now I didn't change the focal point at all when it came to this one, but you now know how to do that, right? So um, we'll go ahead and let these cook for a little bit. Let's do one more here where we actually do change. So I'm going to hit Control E or Command E on the Mac and I'm gonna change the focal point of this image push it back into the center of the scene and I'm gonna do one more rendering here and then at the end here I'll show you all three as a comparison so I'll hit render and that'll launch a third instance of Maxwell and I'll just let all three cook for a little while and I'll be back in a minute alright so here we are in Maxwell and I've got the three different renders going for a few minutes now and it's at a point now where I can show you kind of the differences between the settings so the first one that we sent off had the focal point at the front of the building and we just went with the default settings where we had um, if I jump back into form Z here and we look at the display options for Maxwell remember I had the EV lock off and our f-stop was 8 and that had a shutter speed of 200. Okay, so that's what that first rendering was. And then by chain, by turning on the EV lock, which keeps our exposure the same, but then starts to play with depth of field. And in order to get more depth of field, we went to a lower number in our f-stop, which gives us a higher aperture. You can see that we now have a blurrier background elements going on. So the focal point didn't change. The amount of depth of field actually got smaller which is what makes it look blurrier right so the planes of focus which is you know if your camera's here 
your subject is in the middle, your plane of focus just got tighter by lowering that number in the f-stop value. Um, while our exposure stays the same, you see the, the overall scene is just as bright. And then the third one, all we did was we, we left the exposure value and f-stop and aperture the same, or sorry, aperture and shutter speed the same. We just moved the focal point, and you can see here that it pushed back to the center of the objects so that I have objects in the background are blurry and also objects in the foreground are out of focus. All right. So again, real quick, number one, a little bit of blur in the background, sharp foreground, more blur in the background, continue to have the sharp foreground, and then the last one is actually changing the focal point. All right. So I hope you've gained uh, a small understanding of depth of field in Maxwell. And uh, that's it for this MethodCast Quickie. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.